Hello again from my front porch. It is a, well, obviously a very sunny day here. Normally I would be sitting here, but if I was sitting here, then the sun would just be oh, right in my face. So, so I'm not, not, not sitting there. <laughs> I'm sitting over here. <laughs> anyway, you, you got to be aware of, you know, the lighting and, and these kind of things. So, you know, you don't wind up getting blinded or, or sunburned. Although I think what, like this elbow will wind up getting... <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but no, seriously, uh, it, it's kind of ironic that, that it works out this way that, 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 you know, I've had to, you know, make this, this adjustment for my, for, for, for the sunlight here today, because what I wanted to talk about was the concept of, uh, I call it spatial awareness. Uh, and what I mean is simply being aware of your space, of you, of your surroundings, of your, your context. Uh, and and what, 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 I'm, what I'm really wanting to do is, is just whimper and whine and complain a bit about the people who do not have spatial awareness. <laughs> and I'll tell you, um, you know, my, my traveling for work you know, has picked up uh, a bit. You know, the, I've, I've been, been on the road more for, for work stuff. Not, not here immediately recently, but, but there has been a lot and there is uh, more coming up. But in, in my traveling, I find that um, the people, the lessons that we learned during COVID are completely gone now. You know, I know that the, the, the six foot space was mandated and all that kind of stuff. And people are now like, don't worry about that. But it's not even just, you know, people crowding into your space. It's people just going wherever they want, you know, in airports, for example, people walking down the hallway uh, and usually on a phone, but not always. Um, but they're walking and they just, and, and they'll walk, they'll walk slow. They'll have, they'll have a rollaway bag that's out here to the side of them, not behind them. They're not trying to keep a, a, a small space that's out there. Sometimes it'll be like a whole family, like, you know, not just two people, but like four people. And they'll be walking the, the full, you know, side by side, like they're walking to the OK Corral or something. But the problem is they're walking slow and then there's this big backlog of people behind them going, I, I want to get around this person. You know? But no, they're just la, 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 having no regard <laughs> for anybody else around them. And they have these moving sidewalks. They're, they're, you know, the, I call it the flat escalator. You know, it's the, the thing you step on and, and it just moves forward, the moving sidewalk. And those are set up that's supposed to be, some of them actually are marked or it's written right on the, the, the pads there. Um, but not all, but it, the, the, the understanding is that you stand on the right side. If you want to just get on it and stand and just ride it to the other end, cool. You stand to the right side and you leave the left side open so that people who are in a hurry to get to another plane, they can just whoop, scoot right on by you. And yet again, people get on that thing. And, and they just, they just stand there, they spread out, they take the whole thing up, they, they you know, they, they'll, they'll turn, they'll, they'll set their bags and do it and, and without any regard for the people. By, and then this is the part that always tickles me and not, uh, and this, this actually applies in our places too, but, but, but we're on, I'm on the airport example right now. Uh, somebody will come up behind them and go, uh, uh, excuse me, can I get through there? And they will turn and look at that person with contempt. They'll be like, why are you inconveniencing me? Why, what, what, who do you think you are asking me to? It's, dude, you're the one in the way. <laughs> oh, but then it's not, as I said, it's not just airports. Uh, I mean, go to the, go to the grocery store or Walmart or any place like that. People walk along with their carts and, and some of the aisles are nice and wide and two carts can pass easily. Some, I, I don't know what, you know, they, they keep moving, especially at Walmart. They keep moving the shelving units and they create these weird scenarios in which there, there's this massive walkway between some, some row, in, in, a, in a row between two shelving units, but then one or two over, it's really narrow. It's like, did, did you guys not follow any kind of grid pattern here? Did you not map these out? Um, but doesn't matter whether it's the, the narrow one or the wide one. You'll have people who are walking along and they will literally stop with their cart in the middle of the aisle. Sometimes even at an angle, like, like they're intentionally trying to block everything. And then they'll, but they'll leave their cart there or they'll leave their cart on one side and they walk over to the other side to get what they're getting. And they will stand there going, so you can't get through where their cart is 
and you can't get through where they're standing either. <laughs> it's like, people, come on. <laughs> well, but what I wanted was on that side. So you go up and turn around, come back down the other way. Well, that's a whole lot of extra walking. But it's considerate. You're not the only person here shopping. <laughs> Oh, and then, then uh, I mean, even pe speaking of people going around, people do it in traffic. And, 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 and uh, you know, I mean, I know it's a common complaint that people on the interstate will, will hang out in the left lane just going the speed limit. And, and you know, you, you say that and people are like, well, uh, duh, because anything over the speed limit is breaking the law. <laughs> That's right. Get out of the way. Us lawbreakers have serious law breaking to do. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, uh, if you're in the left lane and you're not passing the vehicle to your right, you're in the wrong lane. If, if you're going the same speed as the vehicle to your right, then there is absolutely no reason you cannot be behind that vehicle on the right. Get out of the way of everybody on the left. But there are people who will ride in that left lane because, hey, I'm entitled to be in this lane. I, I have as much right to be in this lane as anybody else. And in fact, some of you watch right now will be like, uh-huh, that's right. Yeah, but see, the problem is it's technically true, technically very true, but it is rude. It is inconsiderate because you are at that point choosing to intentionally block the people behind you. And you justify it to yourself by saying, eh, I got as much right to be here as anybody. <laughs> you know, I find that people who say that thing, uh, th those, those kind of comments come out of somebody as they get older and older and older. And so, because <laughs> I, I, I've noticed my dad doing it too, which is really funny because I would tell you, and I've, I've, I've shared some stories in the past, but when my dad was younger, when he was my age or even younger than, than I am now, uh, he was uh, uh, quite the rule breaker on the road, which is really funny considering even before that, he was a police officer. <laughs> but, but I mean, I remember one time riding in his pickup truck with him, uh, his big Ford pickup truck, and we were coming down Highway 30 headed back to Carroll, and we got stuck behind some slow traffic in, in, in our lane. It's only a two-lane highway, uh, and, and uh, we got stuck behind some traffic there and oncoming traffic coming from the other side, and he got frustrated at that, and I kid you not, he whips out on the gravel shoulder and floors it and goes blasting past four or five cars that were in front of us. Rocks flying everywhere. These other cars honk, honk, honk. What do you think you're doing? Not him. But Dad, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm tired of waiting behind these vehicles. And around me, took off and went. I, I don't recommend that. that. I'm not giving you that as advice. <laughs> but, but that same man, I'm just giving you that example. That same guy who did that stuff now will, will complain about, you know, he's liable to be that person riding in the left lane, going the speed limit, maybe even slightly under. I mean, like, hey, this is just fine. You, you, I don't know where you're going, but you don't need to be in that big hurry, you know? <laughs> so again, I think I, my, my theory is some of that happens as we get older. So I, I've already said that, uh, you know, there's a meme that sort of alludes to this, but I've, I've already told Lisa and others that, that uh, you know, when I get old, uh, I'm old and retired, uh, I'm going to spend my day driving around uh, town, uh, just, you know, going as slow as I can through intersections, sitting and waiting a green light until it turns yellow. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm an old man, I can do that. <laughs> no, please, I hope that never happens. <laughs> oh, but, but, but really, I mean, I'm finding amusement in this and it, and it is, it is, you know, it's not like the world's biggest problem at all, but, but it goes to the heart or what goes to the heart of this whole matter is, is respect for other people. Uh, it, when, when, when we were in COVID, I don't think we respected other people anymore than we normally would otherwise, but, but the restrictions that were enforced on us, whether we liked them or not, these were the boundaries we had to operate. It's sort of forced a sense of respect. There wasn't really respect. It was just this, this belief that there was respect. Well, now those restrictions are gone. Nobody feels the need to, to you know, keep that level of, of consideration for other people. And so we don't. 
Uh, we have definitely swung that pendulum all the way back to all that matters is me. And again, you see that over and over and over in countless examples, in countless situations, in countless circumstances. And it's just, uh, it is, it is, it could be depressing if you let it be. Uh, and at the very least, it is disappointing. Uh, I, I am, I am just astounded at how uh, otherwise, I've seen people who are really nice. You're talking to them, they're really nice people. Very, very, in fact, they're very considerate. You talk to them, you let me clean that up for you. Let me get that for you. Oh, let me pay that. Those same people turn right around and do some of these other things that I was just describing. Uh, it's like, what, what is it? What is it? Where's that disconnect happen? That, that, that each of us begins to decide what, I am needing to do what, what my plan for my day is, is so important that I can just interrupt yours. I, uh, your, what I'm doing, that's all that matters. I, I, and, and I see that increasingly and, and, and it's, it, 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 it's, it's depressing. Um, because, because there's no rational response to that. And, and in fact, most of the time when someone does something that really upsets you in that way, you don't even have an opportunity to respond and there isn't really anything can be done about it. You just have to grit your teeth and, and accept it, which is of course what the person committing the offense is counting on. <laughs> you know, they're, they're not looking for a confrontation. They're just doing their thing their thing that's important to them. And if you stand up and say, wait a minute, hold it. Now you, you have initiated a confrontation. It's not them that what they were doing is not the reason. No, no, it's you, you started this. <laughs> um, and, oh, and, and so most people don't want to get into that. And so most you know, be guilty of that and so, or get into an argument about it. So we just let it slide. And so then the people who commit those offenses uh, and disregard anybody else around them, uh, they just keep on doing what they're doing. Uh, and I'll give you another an example. Uh, when I am at a door of a store, whether going in or out, and I notice somebody else coming. It doesn't really even matter who it is. Certainly, if, it, if it's a lady, uh, I always will hold the door open. If it's an elderly person, more, more elderly than me, that, 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 that term keeps redefining as I get older. <laughs> uh, definitely, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open the door and hold the door. But, it, but I mean, I've done it for younger people. I've done it for uh, people who just had their hands full. Uh, you know, just, but, but sometimes I have to stand there for a moment. I have to pause. In, in, in what I'm doing, and I have to stand there to wait for them to come to the door. Now, it'd be very easy for me to rationalize and say, you know what, that person is so far away from this door right now that, um, if I, that, that, that you know, I, I could let go of the door, it'll close and stay closed for a while before they even get here. My standing here doesn't make any difference. And it's probably logically completely true. But me, the way I'm wired, no, that, that, that doesn't work. No, not, that doesn't work for me. So, so I stand there and I, I hold the door. But I have had times, um, now, granted, I don't care if somebody holds the door open for me or not, <laughs> because if we go by that same rule about elderly, <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay if you don't hold the door open for me. Uh, but but I was, I was uh, at a, at a uh, location with my parents. I'm not even going to get into where it was, but I was at a location with them. And um, uh, there was an individual went out in front of my mom who was walking with her cane. And they just went out, completely oblivious that she was coming up on that door, not demonstrating willingness to hold that open for her, uh, which really surprised me. Uh, I mean, genuinely, I, I expected, oh, if someone sees, you know, elderly woman coming up with a cane, they're going to hold the door for her. But this person wasn't being mean. They weren't like, ah, ah, old lady, I'm gonna... they just didn't see her. They were oblivious because they lacked that spatial awareness. Well, I want to challenge you in the, in the week ahead, just in this week ahead, just try this, just try it. Try to be more spatially aware to everybody and everything around you and look for those opportunities when you can just step outside your schedule and help somebody. 
It's like a pay it forward kind of thing, but with specific intentional purpose. Give it a shot. Let me know how it turns out for you. With that, I'll see y'all next time from my front porch.